Hey guys, it's Mr. Lauer here. Um, I wanted to make a quick video just to give you some maybe extra help or example problems on this assignment. Um, this is the writing expressions and equations homework assignment. Um, we looked at some example problems in class um, and there was like a, a kind of golden sheet that was is very similar to this that has some practice problems on it. But I wanted to give you a few more and um, some of these pro you know word problems can be a little tricky. Um, so I think the first page is pretty good because you guys practice that at, at home and you should, should have been done already. But uh, some of these ones maybe we can take a look at. So um, I'll give you one of these guys here and this will help you a little bit and then I'm going to go through um, one of the ones on the, the last page. So in this one we have Julian got an after school job where he makes ten fifty an hour. He plans to add all the money he makes into a savings account that currently has one thousand four hundred twenty. First thing we want to do here in part A is write an expression. Okay. So remember that an expression doesn't have an equal sign. It's kind of like an equation. It has some variables and it has some numbers and it has some operations, but it doesn't have an equal sign. So we're looking for something without an equal sign, but we want it to represent the amount of money in the account or like the total amount of money. So we have two different kites of, uh, of money here. We have this starting amount, 1,420, and then we also have this one which will change depending on how many hours we work, right? So we have the 14,020 that we started with, and then to that we're going to add another amount of money. This is the amount that we start with, but we have to add the money that we make when we're working. Um, we don't know how much that is. It's, it's variable. It changes. This doesn't change. The starting amount doesn't change. But the amount of money that we make will depend on how many hours we work. So if the hours we work is H, we have to take our hourly rate, 1050, multiply that by H, and that's going to give us the amount of money we earn. Add that to what we started with, we get our total amount of money. So that's an expression there. Okay. Um, the next one here, B, how much money will be in Julian's savings account after 40 hours? Okay, so what this is asking us to do here is evaluate. Okay, that's one of our important words that we have. Evaluate means plug a number in and then do the operations to get a value. So in this case, they're giving us H, right? 40 hours. He's going to work 40 more hours. He's going to make some money. And then we're going to have a dollar amount. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and write that out with our evaluate. So we got 1,420 plus 1050 times the new amount. So we replace H with 40. And now we just got to figure out what that equals to, or that what that equals, excuse me. So I'm going to grab a calculator probably, unless you're, you know, really, really good at this stuff in your head. But if we do 1050 times 40, that gives us 420. And then to that, we're going to add 1,420. So it looks like we got 1,840 altogether. Right. So I'm just going to double check that, make sure I did it right. 1050 times 40. Yep, that's 420, and add that to 1,420. Okay, cool. This looks like this is our value. Okay, this is our answer. Okay, now the next piece says write an equation for the amount of money M in Julian's account after H hours. Okay, so this is asking for an equation, right? Now we have an expression already, and we know that this is the amount of money in the account. This is just giving us a variable now, amount of money in the account. Okay, we're going to call it M. So we know that M equals 1,420 plus 10.50H. So in all of these problems on this page, A and C are going to look really, really similar. Okay, C has an equation. It includes the expression from part A. So you're going to use this again in part C. You're just going to add another variable on one side and put an equal sign there. The reason why we need this is because we're going to solve in the next one, which is different than evaluate. So let's take a look at D. So use your equation to find the amount of hours Julian worked. So this is what we don't know, right? We're looking for H. We don't know what it is if he has this much in his account. So what we know in this case is M 
and we're looking for H. So we want the total amount of money to be this. We know that's going to be equal to 1,420 plus 10.50 H. Okay. So this is different than, the, than part B because in part B we knew H and this one we don't know H. We've got to find H. So we're going to have to solve it. So we're going to minus 1,400 and 20, minus 1,420, do that on both sides, so this is gone. Bust out the calculator again, so 2050 minus 1420 is 630. So what we get here, I'm just going to rewrite it, is 630 equals 10.50 times h. Okay, divide both sides by 10.50. So that is going to cancel. Um, we've got to see what 630 divided by 10.50 is. And it looks like it's 60. So 60 equals H. Right? We call this a solution. And we know that H was hours. So we're talking 60 hours here. Okay? And I just want to compare part, uh, part B and part D. So in part B, notice that we multiplied by 10.5 and then we added 1420. In part D, we minus 1420 instead of adding, and we divided by 10.5 instead of multiplying by 10.5. So notice that we did the exact opposite in D that we did in B. The reason why is B is evaluating and D is solving. Solving is going backwards to find a missing value of a variable. Not only did we do the opposite operations, minus instead of plus, and divide instead of multiply, we also did it in the reverse order. So in this one, the order of operations would say multiply first by 10.5, then add 1420. So multiply, then add. Right? That's PEMDAS. Multiply comes before add. In solving, however, we subtracted first, and then we divided. So we undid the 1420, and then we undid the 10.5. Okay, so not only did we do the opposite or the inverse operation, we also did it in the reverse order. So that's the difference between a solve and evaluate. Okay, solve goes backwards, you get a solution. Evaluate goes forwards using the order of operations, and you get a value. Okay, expression here, equation here. All right, let's take a look at some of these problems on the back. Um, now these can be kind of tricky. Some of these are easy. Um, some of these are less easy. So I wanted to look at one or two of these with you. Now for these, um, I want to kind of go back and look at a handout that I gave you. So this, your copy of this is blue. Um, I had to print one out here at home, but um, your copy is blue. And these are kind of the steps that we talked about today in solving a problem. We start with our close read. We want to read the problem first. And we're looking, the first thing we want is what we're going to, what our answer, what answer we're looking for. We're going to circle it. Okay. We read it again. We put a box around quantities. And then we read it a third time and we underline words that hint at operations. Okay. So that's what we're going to do over here. Just so I'm just going to walk you through it again. So we're going to take a look at number 28. Okay. This is not one that you um, have an answer for, but. I'll do it with you. So let's read it first. Remember, the first thing we're looking for on our close read is what we're looking for. So you had $23 to spend on four raffle tickets. Okay. After buying them, you had $15. How much did each raffle ticket cost? Okay. So we're going to circle this. How much did each raffle ticket cost? So what we're looking for is the cost of a raffle ticket. We can give it a variable now because we don't know what it is. So we can use R for raffle ticket, or you can use C for cost, or whatever it happens to be. But remember, we're looking specifically not for like a total cost, but a cost for a single ticket. Okay, so each raffle ticket. So let's use let's use R for raffle ticket, just because if we use C for cost, we could do that. But we might forget if we're looking for total cost or single cost. We want each raffle ticket. Okay, so that's the first step. Our second read, we're going to try to find all the quantities, all the amounts, right? And we're going to put a box around them. So $23, okay, that's a dollar amount. We got four raffle tickets, 
and we had $15 left at the end. So those are all important quantities. Now there's an unknown quantity here as well, and that's how much each raffle ticket costs, but we don't know what that is, so we can call that R if we want to. So the second step is make sure that all your quantities, known and unknown, are labeled, or, or we have a number for them. So that's one, we got that $23, we got four raffle tickets, we got 15 left at the end. Um, and then R is the price of one raffle ticket. So all our quantities we've, we've taken into account. Okay, now the third thing that we need to do is to look for clues that talk about operations. So let's see if we have anything in here. So we had $23 to spend. Okay, um, we, after we buy them we had $15. So this is kind of like after everything is said and done, oh sorry, we're gonna underline this. After all is said and done, we're gonna be, this is what we're gonna end up with. So this is the end result. So we don't really see a word that indicates that, except we kind of see this idea of after. So our inference here is that this is happening at the end. At the very end, after everything, at the end result is gonna be 15. Okay, so that's kind of a, a, an important idea. So that's the, that's the close read. We go through and we round some stuff up. Um, there's also this idea of spend. Okay, so spend means you're gonna get rid of some money. We're gonna lose some money here, right? So by context, we're gonna infer that we're gonna have less money than we started with. So we have a less, which is kind of like a minus thing. We have a at the end or at after, which is gonna be kind of an equal sign. So that's what we're gonna be using there. All right, the next step in the process is to write out or verbalize the relationship between the quantities with words. See if we can figure out what's going on, okay? We can draw a picture, we may not need to here. Um, sorry, draw a picture and or a diagram. And we'll also see, think if there's any relevant formulas. So if we're solving a, a problem with distance, rate, and time, we might need, or distance, speed, and time, we might need to know that. If we're solving an equation with a triangle, we might need to know that as well. So in this case, I don't think there's anything really that we need to know in, in terms of a formula or something. Let's talk about um, the situation, okay? So we have starting money, okay? We know we're spending money, so we're gonna minus money spent on raffle tickets. So whatever we spend on the raffle tickets we're gonna have here, minus raffle money, whatever we spent on the raffle tickets, and that equals end money. Okay, I guess I could use a dollar sign here too. That's kind of the idea. Um, let's see if we can replace some of these now. So the next step, if we can, step uh, three, translate into an algebraic equation by replacing the words with numbers, variables, and operations from your close read. So we need to go back and use all the stuff that we, that we had, okay? So starting money, we had $23 to start with, to spend, so that's 23. Okay, we're gonna subtract some stuff, okay? And then at the very end, we're gonna have $15. All right, so end money. Okay, now we don't know how much the raffle tickets cost, right, the raffle money, but we do know there's four of them, and we wanna find out how each one costs. So when you see this word each, that's kind of another clue that we that we probably should have picked up. Um, so each sometimes mean divide means divide, right? Because you're dividing it out, but it also could mean multiply. So if we take each raffle ticket, which we want we want to find, that's R. What we're going to have is the cost of all the raffle tickets should be more than the cost of one raffle ticket, right? So the cost of all the raffle tickets, which would be right here, all the raffle tickets together is gonna be four times the cost of the one individual raffle ticket. All right, so that's kind of the setup there. You got the money to start with minus the money for the raffle tickets equals $15. This each is kind of tricky because sometimes it can mean divide and sometimes it can kind of mean multiply. But if you have, by context, we're gonna infer here, right? If we want each raffle ticket and we bought four of them, then the total cost of all the raffle tickets is four times the cost of whatever one is. 
So now our equation's set up. Cool. The next step is to solve. So going back over here, all right, step five, we're going to solve. Okay. So that's, that's the easy part. That's the part that you guys are pretty good at. So there's a, more than one way to do this, but let's start by minusing 23 from both sides. So negative 4r equals, and then when we subtract here, we're going to get negative 8. Well, 15 minus 23 is going to be negative 8. Okay. Now, keep in mind that this is a negative 4 times r, so even though this is a negative, and it's sometimes that makes people want to plus, what we're really trying to do is undo this multiply. So since here we're multiplying by negative 4, we want to divide both sides by negative 4. So the negative and the 4 will both cancel out, and we'll get 1r, and then the negative 8 over the negative 4 is going to give us a positive 2. Okay, so this is our solution. The last step in our process here, again, this is our, our guide for solving, is to interpret our answer. Make sure it makes sense. Is it reasonable? Okay. So we got r equals 2. That's our solution. Um, is $2 reasonable for a raffle ticket? Well, I don't know. Probably. It's not a million dollars, so that makes sense. It's not negative dollars, so that makes sense. Um, also, if it was like... 2.33333333, that might be kind of weird. So we got a, a reasonable number. Our answer doesn't have to be an integer. Like it could be 1.5 or $1.50. But we're kind of expecting something between maybe 0 and 10 or something like that in the context. So this is a reasonable answer. It makes sense. Um, if we wanted to check it, we could plug it back in to see if it works, to see if we get an identity statement. So this is our solution. Since it's a real-world problem, we might want to just say $2 for a raffle ticket. We'll just put it back in the context of the problem. So R equals 2, that's definitely your solution. But we probably need to go one step further in this case just because it's a real world problem and we want to kind of keep it in that real world problem. So that's a really, really long way of solving it, right? Like I walked through those steps really, really slowly. But the point is here that we want to practice these problem solving techniques when we have an easy problem. This problem you may have been like, cool, I know exactly where to go. And you can do that, you can set it up. But when we get harder problems or more complex problems or more difficult problems, this process here will help you to think about what you're doing, to walk through it, um, and to kind of use all the, the quantities. So this is good technique to practice. I hope that helps. I just wanted to explain a little bit for maybe those who want, needed one more example or for people maybe who are absent today. So that should help you a little bit. Also keep in mind that on your um, the assignment that I gave you, you have all the odd answers. So if you're wondering if you got it right or if you need some extra checks or you want to just make sure you're on the right track here, um, this is your answer key. Now this is auto-generated, so your answers should look pretty similar, but like this one, for example, Q times 11, I would probably put 11Q there. Um, and, so, and some of these, like the order doesn't, you know, super matter, like you could have some things rearranged, but um, this is a pretty good tool for you to help you. Anyway, I hope that helps, and uh, I'll see you guys soon in class. Good luck on your assignment.